Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the Behringer X32 in use with Waves Super Rack Performer and the latency that you're going to expect by using this combination that you have here. Now, Waves Super Rack Performer is a new piece of software that they separated out of the SoundGrid network to be a standalone piece of software. Now, what's neat about this is, one, the price tag is only $100 plus the plugins that you wanna use, but the benefit of this is you can use it with your stock Behringer X32 with the standard USB card on the back of your Behringer X32. We can use this to send up to 32 channels from our board into Waves Super Rack Performer to process with Waves plugins, which is really exciting. But this video is going to be talking to you about the latency that is involved with adding in this extra path of audio. Now, latency is something we are always going to get with a digital mixer. If we end up patching uh, or inserting an analog output and input for a piece of external gear on the Behringer X32, we're going to add latency, which is just a little bit of time. If we go into our effects section and add inserts of any of these plugins on a channel, we're going to add latency. And the same thing is the case for using Wave Super Rack Performer. But there's a few settings that I want to show you which will help you keep that latency low. Now, there's two ways of routing our channels from the X32 to Wave Super Rack Performer. The first is taking it directly from the inputs. So we can go to routing and we can go over to card and we can actually set up our sends from the console to go to Wave Super Rack Performer first. For instance, if I had my AES50A as my stage box from 1 through 16, and then I had some local inputs on 17 through 32, I could set them up this way. And then for the channel inputs, then I would set this to be card 1 through 32 to be able to get all of the inputs back into the channels on the X32. Now, this is going to be the smallest amount of latency because we're taking the channels directly off the inputs, sending them to Super Rack, and then sending them back to the console. Now let's talk about this instance first. So I'm gonna move over to Wave Super Rack Performer here. And under the Setup tab, under Audio Setup, we can see that I have the X Live card selected here. Now I have my sample rate at 48, K or 48,000 hertz. And this is important because we want to have our console with the smallest amount of latency possible because then that gives the best experience to the performers up on stage. Now, unless there is a very specific reason you have your console set up on 44.1 on the sample rate, I would suggest that you set this to 48K because when we set it to 48,000 on the sample rate, then that's going to ensure the minimum latency that you can get on the Behringer X32. If we have this set to 44.1 kilohertz, then what's gonna happen is there's going to be about 8% more latency on all of the inputs and outputs, including Wave Super Rack. Now, the next thing that we have here is our buffer size. Now, our buffer size is important because this is basically taking chunks of audio and processing it through Wave Super Rack and spitting it back out. And the amount of chunks that it takes to process is going to be the amount of latency that it has. So if you take smaller chunks, it's going to be faster on the throughput of the latency. If you're taking larger chunks, it's going to take longer for Wave Super Act Performer to process that audio chunk before it spits it out. But the benefit of a larger chunk is it tasks the CPU on your computer less than if you are taking smaller chunks. So depending on the speed of your computer, you will have to set this so that you're not running too much on the CPU. If we have this set to 32 on our buffer size, that's going to be roughly about 5.9 milliseconds of latency. Now, with latency, we can think of this as the speed of sound. Now, I am just going to make a rough general estimate here that speed of sound travels one foot every millisecond. Now, I know that that's a general rough number, but that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you take a floor monitor and have it right next to you and you're talking to the microphone, it sounds cohesive. Now, 
if you take that floor monitor and move it away six feet or 5.9 feet away from you, then that is creating this 5.9 milliseconds of latency between you talking into your microphone and you hearing it from the speaker. Now, honestly, that's not much latency. And to be honest, most of us that use floor wedges have this latency all the time because you're standing and depending on how high you are or how far away you are from that floor wedge, you are going to be hearing this 5.9 milliseconds of delay due to where you're standing from that floor wedge. Now, if we change this to 64, then our latency is going to be 7.2 milliseconds. So we're just scooting that floor wedge a little bit farther away. Now it's seven feet away from us. So we're just adding in a little bit of latency here. But if we then go to 96 on our buffer, what's going to be the latency is 8.56 milliseconds. Now again, we're just scooting that floor wedge a little bit farther away from us. If we change this to a 128, it's going to be 9.9, .9, so roughly 10 feet away. Now at this point, this is going to be where monitoring situations are going to give you an issue. If you go above 10 milliseconds of delay, eh, roughly 10 to 15 milliseconds of delay on a floor wedge, this is where your musicians are going to start noticing a difference in their wedge. Now, if you're using in-ears, they're going to notice this a lot sooner. So if you're using in-ears and feeding your mix from your X32 to those in-ears, and you are feeding front of house with your X32, the people out in the audience, they're not going to notice a difference, but the people with the in-ears are. So if you are using Wave Super Act Performer with someone with some in-ears, I would suggest once they start hearing it to basically take their channel, double patch it, send one of those channels to front of house and one of those channels to the musician. Put waves on the front of house channel and on the monitor channel, just use the X32 channel processing that's built into the board. If we go to 192, our latency is going to be 12.5 milliseconds. If we then go to 256, our latency is 15.2 milliseconds. If we then go to 512, our latency is now 25 milliseconds. But don't get too discouraged quite yet because this can actually be a benefit to us if we're mixing broadcast. Now just wait for a second. If we go to 1024 on our buffer size, our latency is 47.23 milliseconds. And lastly, if we go to 2048, our latency is 89.9 .9 milliseconds, roughly 90 milliseconds, which is a long time. Now, what I was saying with broadcast, oftentimes what I find in all churches, venues, everything, is that audio is always going to arrive faster than video in a streaming environment. And so this is going to be the case because video devices take a lot of time to process through different portions of the video system, especially if you have an older system that maybe has a router plus a switcher plus another router and then an embedder. All of those pieces of devices are going to add up latency as far as the time goes that the video is taking to process. Now, if we are talking about running 59.94 on the frame rate for video, one frame of latency is 16.6 milliseconds. Now, on average, most systems that I'm seeing are seeing two to three frames of latency. Now, if we do the math on three frames of latency, that is about 50 milliseconds of delay. Now that's running 59.94, which is a fairly fast video rate. If you're running 29.97, this expands even more. One frame of latency at 29.97 is 33.3 .3 milliseconds. So if we multiply that by three frames of latency, that is almost 100 milliseconds of latency. Now, if you're running 24p on video, then that latency is going to be 41 milliseconds. 
41.6 to be exact. And so if we add three frames of latency at that, that's 124 milliseconds of latency. Now this can actually be a benefit to you because one, you don't have to then delay our audio out of the board to sync up with video. You could just run a buffer size that is higher and more latent in Wave Super Act Performer. The benefit of this is we're tasking our processor less. If I have my buffer size at 2048, we can see that my CPU usage is at 0%. If I take this and put it at 32, we will notice that my CPU usage will expand up a lot. And I don't even have any plugins running on this. So this is hovering at about 12% on the CPU usage at 32 and 0% at 2048. So what you can do is you can do the math by calculating your frame rate divided by one, and that will get you the amount of time in the seconds that one frame of latency is. And then you can best decide which buffer size you want to run to match up with the audio and the video to be together. Now, what about running front of house with this? Well, I find that if you're running anywhere between 15 milliseconds and less, the audience is not going to notice. The only example that someone would notice is if they are sitting in the front row. They are going to be hearing the speaker on stage talking or that vocalist singing. They're going to be hearing that direct sound off the stage, and then they're going to be hearing the PA is slightly latent behind that. But the majority of your audience is not sitting in the front row. The majority of your audience is in the middle of the room, far enough away from your vocalist or speaker that they're not going to be hearing the direct sound off the stage. Their main source of sound is gonna be coming from the PA. So if you're adding in about 15 milliseconds of latency, there is no problems with the audience noticing that there is something in line with the audio. So feel free to use Super Act Performer in a front of house situation because that 15 milliseconds and less is not going to be something that they will notice. I will oftentimes use Wave Super Act Performer in a corporate situation with people on lobs up on stage, and I am fine running a 10 millisecond latency. Of course, the faster latency that you can get, the better. So if you do happen to have a computer that is good on processing and fast on processing, then run one of those smaller buffer sizes. Now, the other way that you can set up the X32 with sending our audio is by using the aux inserts. And to do this, we can go and change this back to being from our local. And then what we're going to do is we are going to set our aux ins to be from card. And then what we will then do is go over to card and set one through eight to be from our aux one through six and monitor. Now what this will do is this will take all of your aux ins and remove them basically. So you wouldn't be able to use your aux ins at this point. But what we can then do is we can go select a channel, we can go into the configuration and preamp section, we can go and grab our insert, select aux one and connect and insert this. And what this is then going to do is this is going to take the audio processing of my channel then send it to Wave Super Act Performer using the aux output and the expansion card. Then pull it back in from the card into our aux input one, and then it will put it back into this channel. Now the benefit of this is I can insert on any of my channels, the mix buses, the mains, the matrices, the channels. I can insert on any of those things up to six channels. The other benefit is I can insert or uninsert this at any point in time if I want to. By doing it in this way, we're going to be adding a slight amount of delay or latency into this path. So we'll add about 0.37 milliseconds of more latency to this path by using the aux inserts. And that's because the X32 is processing the audio and then sending it out and then having it coming back and then sending it to the PA. So our difference at a buffer of 32 between either just sending the channels directly to waves and then back to the console, that was 
but if we're using the aux insert method, it is 6.27. So really not that much of a difference. The benefit of using all 32 channels from the inputs going into waves is we can process all 32 channels. The benefit of the aux method is that we can insert it on any of our mix buses, matrices, or main. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I would make on the Behringer X32, any of those consoles out there, or even Waves plugins, please drop that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I just released a brand new X32 fundamentals course where I teach through my favorite five fundamentals that I believe that any audio engineer should understand to be excellent at mixing on the Behringer X32. If you want to check out more on that, you can visit the link in the description or you can visit drewbrashler.com for more information on that. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.